Hi, I'm Ben, and this is my podcast where I share interviews, tips, and ideas to help you build a better marketing strategy. For this episode, I'd like to share an extract from my Marketing Boost webinar, where I show you how to be remarkable in your business and why this matters. All the credit goes to Seth Godin for the idea. I hope you enjoy. I want you to create regular, informative, useful and remarkable blog articles, social shares, how-to videos and email so that people become aware of you and then you measure and tweak that for success. So remarkable is the operative word in this sentence. Now, here's a quote from Seth Godin. Uh, you may or may not know the guy. If you don't, um, do look up his website. Just type in Seth Godin. Uh, I think his website's called This Is Seth. His blog's going to come up, and he blogs a lot, and most of the content is great. So, so I suggest you follow him. But this is um, something that I think came out of his Purple Cow book, which I'd also recommend reading. Remarkable doesn't mean remarkable to you, as in the person I'm talking to right now. It means remarkable to me, the customer. Am I going to remark on it or not? And if not, your average and average is for losers. Now, while that last bit is a bit harsh, let's take his point and look at a social media feed. If what you're producing and putting out there and posting onto your social media feed is average, an average in, in compared to all of your um, competitors, and it's going out to your audience, you won't stand out. Whatever you're posting, whether it's great high quality video or, or, or just text, if you aren't standing out compared to the competition, you're going to be average or worse and people won't see you. And it's going to be a waste of your time. You may as well not do it because no one's going to miss you. What you need to be creating is something that's remarkable, something that stands out so much. People have to remark on it. It makes them stop. It makes them watch. It makes them share it with other people. That's what you want to achieve. That can be quite hard. However, I would say remarkable doesn't have to be big. You can take the small remarkable things and try and apply them on a personal level. Um, just saying happy birthday to someone, buying someone a coffee, giving a referral. You appeal to the person. Now, it does take a little while to do this, but some of the best marketing campaigns have been done on a person by person basis, because we respond really well to other people and other people we connect with. So I'll give you some examples. So we run a podcast, as I mentioned. Actually, we've recently changed the format of it. But previously, what I did a lot of is going to conferences and doing interviews with people. And this conference, Bath Digital Festival, was a really good conference, actually, and I'm looking forward to it this year. Um, I would go and watch a lot of the people at the um, festival, listen to their, what they had to say, maybe write down a few questions. And then afterwards, I'd go up and see them and say, thanks, that was really good. Love what you had to say about this. Can I just take five minutes of your time just to ask you uh, this particular question and maybe record it for our podcast? Would that be OK? Of course, they're going to say it's OK. Yeah, I want to be on your podcast. Um, they might ask a little bit more about it. It's great. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to maybe swap business cards or LinkedIn details. So you can connect with them online, slowly build that network out a little bit more. Um, and then you can deliver a podcast. You can, you can do the interview with them. You connect a little bit more closely with them because it's quite remarkable that someone is willing to record them. So that's something notable. It's going to stand out in their day. And also you get permission to contact them later and share this with them because they want to see it. So um, over the course of the festival, I can't remember how many people I spoke to now. It was eight or 10 or something like that. I would speak to all of these people and then I put together a video. It's a little summary of the um, of the festival, if you will. I'd give a little intro and then I would share a couple of the interviews that I, I had, maybe with some connection commentary if necessary. And then I would I think it was maybe a week or so later, I put that up on LinkedIn and shared it to the world. Now, what I'd normally expect is that maybe people who already know me, they're going to watch it. Maybe some of my customers, because it's going to go out in an email as well, um, are going to watch it. But ultimately, it's going to sort of die off and maybe get a couple of people watching over over the time. Maybe if I'm lucky, even Bath Digital Festival, if I pass them enough, we'll share it with our audience as well, which they did, which was great. And so you get a couple of bites of that cherry for people to see your content. But by including other people, you become a bit more remarkable because A, you've made those connections at the event, which is really nice. 
But also those people are waiting to see what you've produced. And when you do, they want to share it because hopefully it's great content that you've produced. Well, I'm just assuming what you what you produce is great. So uh, they want to see what you've produced and they share it with other people. And what tends to happen is you get one bite as you've shared it, maybe some comments on, um, I think there's LinkedIn where I shared it, so you get some comments on that. And then over the next two weeks, I got more comments and shares from other people as they're sharing on their own networks. So I get more reach from my content and it's extended its life, um, its lifespan, uh, certainly for social, over two weeks, which is great. And then also I've got this archive of content, which I can then reshare with my clients at any time. So it's useful in lots of different facets. But the remarkable thing is I'm interviewing people and getting permission to communicate with them later. And they are waiting to see this. So they're eager, which is brilliant. And I've made some great contacts. In fact, Ed, who's pictured here, uh, putting his hand to the camera. We're doing another um, uh, podcast together, a talk together at Bath Digital Festival. And we've communicated since and a, a couple of the others as well. So you can make good contacts this way and having more people who uh, are willing to share your content. Next thing to do is to say thank you. Now, this is a nice example uh, where Sarah Townsend followed um, Elizabeth Dunn on Twitter. And what Elizabeth did was quite simple, really. It's just handwrite a message on a post-it note, take a photograph of it, uh, and a good quality photograph of that, um, and then tweet that back to Sarah to say thank you. It's a small thing. Um, and depending on how many followers you get, it, it may, may not take very long to do. I mean, Sarah's got quite a few followers, so Elizabeth may have looked at that and gone, oh, actually, that's that's worth um, taking the effort to say thank you to Sarah because she's busy in terms of who she follows. So for her to follow me is quite a big thing. And I know it was remarkable because Sarah shared it on her own timeline. So I know that she thought it was interesting and nice thing to do. It's a small, remarkable thing, and it's one-to-one, -one, but it can get you some more exposure, as you can see here, Sarah shared it with other people. It's a little tiny hit. It's not going to be your marketing campaign, but it can be a really nice way of connecting with people in a way that is different. Something else that's different is giving gifts. Um, I often give gifts for referrals. Um, I use actually Grazebox. Uh, I don't know if anyone heard of it, but they're about £3.80. I'll mention them later, actually. And if someone refers me, instantly they get a little Grazebox through the post. I don't tell them they're going to get it, um, but they get it through the post and they I often get messages back going, oh, nibbles, Ben, thanks very much. It's really nice. It's just something a little bit different. I don't expect anything from it. Um, these brownies, however, are a step up. So if someone gave me a referral and some business came through from it, then I want to say thank you. But I don't want to give people money because what do you give them? 10, 20, 100, 500 pounds? What is actually worth it to a business owner? You don't know. Whereas where you're appealing to uh, emotion, and I think for most people, chocolate does, but not everyone. Some, a lot of people give wine. But if you give a gift, that appeals to, it's a personal connection. It's an emotional connection. And uh, Alex sent, uh, again, I didn't tell Alex he was getting these. They just came through the post with a thank you note on them. And then Alex sent me a little um, iMessage uh, video with uh, his team members uh, sort of fighting over the uh, over the brownies they're in there. And you can see here, John, one of his uh, uh, team holding up one of the brownies. And it's really nice to see. Now, I mean, in terms of getting more exposure online, it would have been lovely to get this as a social share. But, you know, you can't control these sorts of messages. You've got to you've got to do something that is not contrived. So I'm not sending that the brownies to get a response like this but I know it's very emotive. So I do get really good responses from people that may be in person like this, or it could be on social. So I think finding a process where you can really connect with people in a, in a personal way allows you a bit more permission to communicate with them normally. So this is a really good idea. And these are tasty brownies, by the way. And then finally, this is just a, sort of shows the power of video, really. This is Jonathan Mayhan. And I interviewed him for our podcast when I was doing those sort of interviews. And um, you know what really stuck out for me? Because I had a lot of people emailing uh, about getting an interview, coming on my show, talking about their book or what they do and how great they are. And you can imagine if you're having to sift through these, you just in the end just want to ignore them all. 
Well, Jonathan stood out because he approached me with an email, with a little animated GIF of him in there, um, and he just held up a little um, a little board, hand wrote my name on the board, and um, I could see, oh, it's personalized because it said, hi, Ben, on there. And then he would start talking and uh, talk about why he wants to come on my podcast. So he's talking about specifically about the Something Inventive podcast and what he wants to talk about. And would that be interesting to take it forward? And then I just reply back to an email. And then it, actually we had a, a really good conversation. And eventually he came on the show very quickly. The great thing for me is it stood out. It was remarkable. Instantly, I could see Jonathan. I could see who he was and I could um, see what he wanted to talk about. I, and I also could see that he was ready to go on the podcast because he could he could set up the camera and I could know he could he could talk fluently um, about his his given subject. So I instantly I uh, found it a lot easier to rule him in than many of the others where they just sort of write a bit of text and send you off in different directions to various links around the Internet. So it's a really good approach in and of itself. He then wrote a blog post about how he used that approach. Very meta, really, um, to get onto the podcast. And he did that in video himself. And I guess what I'm saying here is there's two there's two sort of ideas what was remarkable is he used video in an email to get in, in touch with me. Now, that's still new and unique, and not many people know how to easily do that, and therefore, that's still remarkable. He then also used video in a LinkedIn post to uh, share that idea as well. Less remarkable, but still really good, rather than just writing out a, uh, a post or linking to his website or doing a LinkedIn Pulse post. Actually, having it on video as well is a really good way to get people engaged. So, Video, if you want to be remarkable, do it piece to camera like this where you're actually talking to the people that you want to reach. They can see you and you can connect with them personally and you can share the message that could be a blog post in the same way on video. It's still remarkable. If you found this podcast interesting, then you might like my marketing club. You can join for free to receive regular tips and advice so you can become more effective in marketing your business. Pro members get access to my live webinars every single month along with all the previous webinars I've done. There's even a podcast version you can listen to while you wash the dishes. Find out more by visiting ratherinventive.com slash club. That's ratherinventive.com slash club. Bye for now.